Hey everybody, Omar here, your Knife of the Party guy, and I am back, and guess what? I got a great surprise for you. It's in this case. <laughs> yeah, Omar, the Knife of the Party guy, has gone to too many parties, and uh, I got the party in this case. We're going to take a look at it. I'll give you guys a good, quick look at it, and then I'm going to do something special to this knife that you've never seen before. Uh... Yeah, this knife is just absolutely fantastic. Now, normally, I have my um, light on my iPhone, so we have that extra light, but this time we're not going to have it, and I'm, I'll explain why. Uh, I'm going to go over this knife in just a, a second or two, but I wanted to show you guys something aesthetically that this knife does that other knives don't doesn't do. Uh, I'm actually doing that right now, so if you guys don't mind just kind of hanging back, I'm going to show you something kind of special with this piece that you're not going to see on any other knife. Uh, it is really freaking cool. Uh, I'm just going to give it a couple more seconds here um, while I do this, and as I am uh, doing this, just kind of sit there and hang. Because it's kind of important that I do this. I can't, like, not do this video unless I do what I'm about to do and what I'm about to show you on this piece. And then you'll understand why I got it. Then we'll go over the entire knife and uh, talk about it. So we're going to, I think I'm ready to do it now. So let's go ahead and do it up. And you guys will be able to see what I'm talking about. I'm going to turn off the lights can you guys see that the knife glows in the freaking dark I didn't do the other side but you could see how the knife has got that really cool green thing going and the reason it doesn't glow on the other side is because I didn't put the light up against the other side but as you guys can see um, pivot ring um works actually let me see if i can do it again i'm going to turn on this one light just one time real quick and then i'll try and do a full 3d effect i hope you guys can be a little patient with me while i do this i thought that i could turn off the camera phone light and still have the video going but i can't it turns out that if you turn the light off on your iphone the video will stop going so i do apologize for this dead air or this dead sight but Trust me, it'll be worth it. So we're going to take a look now on the knife. Bam! Check that out. Unbelievable. In a second, I'm going to turn on the lights on this video. But I just wanted you guys to see that the knife glows in the freaking dark. Like you wouldn't believe. So that's obviously one of the reasons why I had to have this piece. So we're going to go ahead and turn all the lights back on. I'm going to go ahead and continue this video. And we're going to continue the video as normal with, uh, you know, some size comparisons, the specs, the whole shebang. But I needed you guys to see the aesthetics on that knife because I wouldn't be doing it justice if I did not. So let's go ahead and get into this knife. Uh, this is a creation by one of my favorite knife makers, uh, ex-architect and ex-knife maker, uh, John Arnold. And uh, yeah, for the rest of the video, the phone camera light will be off. I hope the light, the lighting is still good for you. Um, yeah, because I can't, I can't turn it back on. I think if I turn it on, the um, the video would just stop. So. So yeah, this knife is made by John Arnold, and it's a new piece I picked up today at the Blade Gallery. Um, yeah, as you can see, the, the uh, scales completely glow in the dark, but uh, during the daytime, you've got this really beautiful black marble carbon fiber going on it. Uh, Shrevet marble carbon fiber. We have a beautiful blue titanium pocket clip. And uh, a carbon fiber back spacer. Really very nice. This is a small knife. 
and we're going to go ahead and get into the specs and do some size comparisons. So let's just go ahead and do that. So the knife is a one-of-a-kind handmade piece. Blade length is approximately three inches in length. Cutting length of the knife is 2.6. The total length of the blade is 7 inches, and it weighs about 2.8 ounces. Uh, we've got a ground premium M390 stainless steel and a moon glow uh, pivot ring and moon moon and a moon glow or moon glow glow in the dark shredded carbon fiber scales that are set in blue titanium liners. Uh, so let me tell you a quick story of this knife before I get into the size comparisons here. I bought this knife only because uh, I was contemplating buying an X, uh, sorry, an EXK made by Trevor Berger, but, and it was a beautiful, it's a beautiful, beautiful EXK. It had blue tie mascus on the back spacer, the pivot ring, the pocket clip, uh, and the inlay. So it's four places. The knife costs $1,500. That's with tax. And I kept thinking, I'm not so sure that a knife that size is worth it. I don't care how much Blue Time Ascus is, is on it. And then I walked into the Blade Gallery and I saw this knife that cost a third of the price. And I said, yeah, I think I'll get this instead and put that other knife on the back burner. It doesn't mean I'm not going to get it. Uh, but, you know, I'm, you know, just contemplating it. And for now, I'd like to put it on the back burner. We've got a front flipper knife here. Um, the detent on this is super, super soft. Um, for whatever reason, John Arnold's little knives like this uh, have soft detent. It is so soft that you can do it with the inertia opening. You don't even have to do anything to uh, open the blade. I mean, even like backwards the knife will open if you just sort of shake it open uh as you guys can see there the knife the knife will just pop right open so it's got a very soft detent but at the same time um in john arnold's defense i can't just sit here and shake the knife and the knife will pop out it won't do that i'm shaking this sh you know vigorously and the blade isn't popping out but it does have a soft detent so let's go ahead and do some size comparisons because I know everybody's kind of waiting to see that. What does this knife measure up? So we're going to start with uh, the... Um, how about a Kershaw? This is the Kershaw bare knuckle knife in uh, black, uh, black wash, M390, and carbon fiber scales. So there you have that. Uh, we're also going to go ahead and put it up against the, um, how about the 0562? Guys can get a look at that. As you guys can tell, it is a real small knife, not very big. Uh, how about up against the Sebenza 21? Now that knife might be a little bit closer in size. But even the Sebenza, well, no, it's about the size of a Sebenza 21, roughly. Uh, let's try the, how about the um, Omnumzon, the uh, Chris Reeve Omnumzon. It's definitely a real user knife, as you guys can tell. Um, what about another Kershaw? The Kershaw, I think this is the Launch 11, I'm going to say. So it's about the same size as the Launch 11 Auto by Kershaw. Uh, I know, let's put it up against the Spyderco, uh, Swish Bowie. He's pronounced that sucker as sleaze, Bowie, for like the longest time. And then just to um, give it a little flavor. Uh, yeah, how about the uh, ZTO... Sorry, ZTO 900.
And there's, yeah, there he goes. It's up against the uh, ZT0900. And then finally, how about the Benchmade Anthem? That's a favorite. So as you guys can see, this is a small custom knife. And yeah, like I said, I picked this guy up at the Blade Gallery. It was an impulse buy. I had to have it just because the scales glowed in the dark like you guys just saw. Again, you know, I've never seen anybody, any knife like that, that where the entire scales glow like that. That's just absolutely wild. Um, I like little small knives like this. What's fantastic about this knife is that you're not going to see a lot of, of a lot of new South African knife makers making knives this size. I think making knives this size comes with experience. Uh, a knife maker only knife, certain knife makers can make small knives like this with such great tight fit and finish. Um, yeah, I mean, as you guys can see, the centering on this guy is just perfect. Another detail on this knife you guys can see is uh, the pocket clip side, as far as the carbon fiber scales go. If you look closely, the carbon fiber scales are slightly thicker on the non-pocket clip side than the pocket clip side. On the pocket clip side, it's thicker. That is done intentionally, but you still have to look really close to even see that. I mean, the work it takes to make a knife like this, um, the ergonomics on it are absolutely fantastic. You can fit all four fingers on this knife. I don't have a problem with it. Really, though, it's really a three-finger grip because there's the index finger going right here. Um, but you could move it up and choke up and make the middle finger the, where your finger would, where that indentation would go and then put the rest of your fingers around the knife, and then your index finger would simply just rest right on this part of the knife. Uh, there's plenty of room, so if you wanted to choke up on it, you can. We've got a really nice swedge here for your thumb for pushing down cuts. Not a knife uh, that will be good for drawing. I mean, it's got barely a belly on it. Other than that, it's just a straight across, almost worn clip style, and then we've got the blade kind of swooping up a little bit. Um, but the good news is because it, we've got this point sticking out, you can actually choke up on the knife and like maybe pick out some splinters with it or do some like very, very intricate type of uh, cutting. If you needed to, you could do that on this little knife. Uh, and it's a perfect size. So any knife with a point like that, uh, you know, that, that kind of helps if you were going to be doing some intricate cutting on there. Um, it's just a spectacular piece overall. We've got a beautiful carbon fiber uh, backspacer there. Um, I just hope this video is not too dark for you guys because I normally have the iPhone light on, but you know, obviously, if I were to turn it on now, I think the um, the video would just stop. So, but I wanted to show you guys those glow in the dark scales that we've got on here. The action is just stellar. I mean, this thing just drops down. This is not on ceramic bearings. It's just on regular, um, yeah, tool steel ball bearings. So you would need to oil this knife. Um, yeah. Yeah, the jimping on that, it gives you plenty. It gives you plenty. I mean, you've got like one, two, three, four, five, like seven strikes across there. Your thumb will fit and rest nicely on that part if you wanted to, to use it, use the jimping and rely on it. It's perfect. Um, yeah, just a beautiful, beautiful little knife. The shredded carbon fiber, even though they glow in the dark, just by themselves really stand out. Uh, you've got this uh, sort of nice um, laminate on it. It's not really a laminate so much as it's a spray uh, called K2 Gloss Spray. A lot of South African knife makers use it to give the knife a nice classy, uh, shiny look to it. And it actually takes skill 
to put that um, coating on there, um, the uh, process takes about three hours to get that to look like that. And I believe the night maker by hand has to polish it up uh, a few times to get it to sort of shine like that. So it's another thing you may want to consider, uh, you know, as to why you want to buy it. It's important to know what these night makers are doing by hand uh, because you're paying a lot for these knives. I mean, you're not just paying an incredibly expensive uh knife just for the hell of it you need to know the reason why the knife is costing you what it's costing you one of the uh reasons that uh made by hand concept gets so lost is because we tend to forget the amount of hours it takes a knife maker to create even just one knife versus doing uh a knife made on uh, versus a production knife where the knife is made on an assembly line by some very, very skilled workers. Uh, and then at the end of that assembly line, you have a finished knife. Well, here you've got one guy probably working till about three or four in the morning, uh, rushing this order out to a customer to get it to him. Um, because that's important to know. That's why you're paying the price that you're paying. And a lot of times these custom knives... They are made for you based on your material suggestions and what the knife maker can create. So in a sense, you as a person buying this knife is actually contributing to the way the knife looks uh, and is presented to you for your collection. So I wanted to get that word out there. So yeah, I mean, this is really just... The carbon fiber on this is, it's all you need, uh, really to, you know, to, um, know how special this knife is. Um, I love the little teeny tiny screws. The screws are very, very small. Obviously, for the art effect, you want to be able to enjoy the, uh, shredded carbon fiber scales without these big gigantic screws in the middle of the knife getting in your way of the way that the knife actually looks. You want to appreciate the scales. Um, you know, simple pocket clip, blue, nothing fancy. Uh, yeah, the blue titanium liners are really, really nice, so... Yeah. John Arnold, a master knife maker. One of the reasons I love John Arnold is he is a cross between uh, the classic South African knife that we love, like maybe Andre Thorburn or even Bess Horn. Um, this guy is um, almost crossing over into the exotic because a lot of the exotic knives you'll see are shaped like John Arnold's knife, or beginning to look like knives like this, as far as the shape of it, where, you know, you've got points here, and you've got points there, you know what I mean? And and they've got, like, the curved, where it's supposed to be curved for ergonomics. Uh, you've got that on those knives, but the materials that they choose on those more exotic knives are uh, a lot more exotic than you may even be used to. They're using materials like shark's teeth, and like coral, and like whalebone, and ostrich feathers, and whatever else they may find to put on a knife. Uh, whereas John Arnold doesn't go quite that far. He'll keep the shape of that exotic look, but the materials he puts on his knife are much more familiar to you. More like carbon fiber, more you know, more like white Westinghouse, the more generic uh, but yet high clan, more like Damascus, you know, the more generic material, generic materials, but not so far off to what you're used to. Cause I, I believe, and I'm not even there yet either. I believe that once you get to that point, you know, you can really appreciate South African knives. Like I don't own any knives with whalebone on them or, you know, any of those other exotic materials. So there you have it. John Arnold, the name of this knife, I forgot to mention is called the Simba Midi Front Flipper with glow-in-the-dark shred carbon fiber, and it's got an M390 blade. Uh, yeah, I don't think I even did the stats on this, but I'll do them real quick. Uh, the blade length on this knife is 3 inches. The cutting length is 2.6. The total length from tip to toe, you're looking at about 7 inches overall, and the knife weighs about 
2.8 ounces, so it's not very, very heavy. So there you have it. Really fantastic glow-in-the-dark knife. You can see why it made my collection, made by John Arnold. Uh, just another spectacular piece. This is Omar, the, the knife of the party guy, signing off. Uh, hoping you'll find uh, one of my, one of the uh, names that you've seen, many names that you've seen on this channel, uh, South African knife in your collection. Maybe it'll be a Thorburn, maybe it'll be a Des Horn. Who knows, but I do hope that maybe a South African knife will be in your collection someday because their choice of materials, the way that the package is put together is more unique than any other knife put together than any other knife that you've ever seen uh, out there. Uh, South Africa is very, very famous for custom knife making. And the way they do it up artfully is just absolutely stellar, in my opinion. This is Omar, the Knife of the Party guy, signing off. And you guys have a wonderful and fantastic Saturday evening.